This video is kind of an offshoot or a result of a project that I'm uh, undertaking right now in restoring a motorcycle. And the tank that came with the motorcycle was pretty beat up and really rusty inside. Um, the outside of it, some of the paint was chipping and uh, it just needed to be restored. Part of the problem with uh, these metal tanks getting rust in them is that now we're using ethanol in all of our fuel and ethanol is alcohol and alcohol attracts moisture and it just rusts these older metal tanks out. In my opinion ethanol is a blight on everything. It ruins motors and carburetors but it definitely will do a lot of damage to metal tanks. In this vid though I'll show you how to bring a tank back to new condition like what you see here. It's just all ready for paint whatever I want to do with it and it's pretty cheap to do it too. Pretty easy and pretty cheap. Now I'm going to show you how I got the rust out of my tank using just vinegar, it doesn't matter whether it's white or apple cider, and some BBs. I've seen other guys use sand and gravel and nuts and bolts and everything else, but I think BBs are the easiest to get out after the job is done, so that's why I use BBs. I think this is the best way. All the vinegar you need to fill this to the top, and then just throw in some BBs. And then you need time. You need to leave it at least for a week. And during that time that the vinegar and BBs are in there, you need to shake it up once or twice a day. I like to level the tank off with vinegar and the BBs in there, wrap it in a couple plastic bags, and then come out there and shake it up at different times of the day, once or twice a day, for about a week. To get the paint off the tank, I used Rust-Oleum Aircraft Stripper. It makes that job pretty easy. And finally, once I got all the rust out, I used Red Coat Fuel Tank Liner. I'll never have to worry about rust in my tank again, and it's safe to use ethanol in it as well if I have to. I'm going to give you a few shots of what the tank looked like before I did this, and then we'll just take off from there at the point where I was emptying the tank after a week of sitting with the vinegar and the BBs. Here's what the tank looked like when I started. You can see a chip in the middle of the tank on the other side on the edge. There was quite a few of those, and it was in bad shape, and of course a horrible color blue. And this is what pretty much the inside of the whole tank looked like. A lot of rust. I'm trying to come down and give you a shot of the inside here best I can, but you get the idea. It was really gumming up the carburetor. Taking the paint off wasn't that big of a deal with the stripper, but getting the rust out is the key. Here's what it looked like after sitting with a week in vinegar. Look at that rust. Rust. Awesome. That's what we want to come out. Thank you. Once I empty the vinegar out of the tank, I'll use old fashioned baking soda, the same kind you use in your laundry and in the kitchen, and I'll pour it into the tank and then even all over the tank to neutralize the acidic effect of the vinegar. And then I'll use hot water to rinse it off completely. I'm going to take this outside and try to show you the inside of that tank, but <laughs> it's spotless. And you can't beat this. I've never found anything that will beat it, especially for the price. Now there are stronger acids that you can buy from the auto stores, and uh, you know it'll claim to clean them out in an hour or two hours or even less than that sometimes. But you know they also tell you you have to use a respirator and make sure you wear all this equipment. If you just take your time and let vinegar do the work, you know, for a couple bucks, it'll completely clean that tank out. I use a heat gun to completely dry out the tank so there's no moisture in there that can start new rust. A little bit of work, but it uh, sure leaves you with a lot of satisfaction. One last thing, I did fog it with WD-40 just to uh, seal it up in there until I'm ready to do whatever I want to do with the tank. To get this tank ready to coat the inside, I've got to totally degrease it. And that means getting rid of the WD-40 that I sprayed in there to arrest any corrosion. Now if you wanted to skip the WD-40 step, you still have to degrease the tank. I just put the WD-40 in there to give me a few days to mess around with other things until I got back to this. But no matter what, you've got to degrease it. I use Simple Green for this. I stick a cup in there, run some hot water through, let it soak for 5 or 10 minutes and then thoroughly rinse it out to make sure that everything's out. Simple Green is a good degreaser, but you don't have to use that. Any water-soluble degreaser will work. 
you'll have to thoroughly rinse it to get the degreaser out. Make sure it's completely rinsed out. Hot water really helps because that even helps it dry faster, but that also helps get rid of any uh, residual oils. Then you'll want to dry it out. I like to dry it out as soon as possible to prevent any uh, further corrosion. But if you feel like you didn't get all the grease, a couple ounces of uh, acetone, rinse it through, that'll help. And with this one, I feel like I got it all, so I'm just going to dry it out and get ready to coat the tank. Now, I get the tank pretty hot when I'm using the heat gun. That helps just evaporate the water that much quicker. It's equally important that you remove all the moisture as it is to get all the grease out. I also used a non-oiled air compressor to blow it out to help evaporate it even quicker. Using the air compressor also ensures that I'm getting all the moisture out. It's really astonishing how clean that vinegar actually gets the tank. I'll also check with a mirror and a flashlight if I have to to make sure the tank is completely dry and clean. Plug all the holes going into the tank except for the one that you're going to pour the coating into. I just use painter's tape. It's plenty strong enough to hold it for the time that I need it. Pour about a half a quart into the tank. I had to make a homemade funnel because none of mine are even close enough to being clean enough to do this job. Then seal that opening up. And of course, you know, the amount that you need to coat the tank is going to be directly affected by the size of the tank. In this case, I'm using a half a quart because I have less than a two gallon tank. You'll have to, if you, have, if you had a bigger tank, you'd have to put more in there, obviously. So seal it up and then let's rock it around. Make sure it coats the whole inside thoroughly. You want to turn it upside down, whatever you have to do to make sure it gets on everything. Take your time with this, you know, flip it around in as many different directions as, as you want to to feel secure that the tank is coated. Uh, it's not going to start drying out until you open it up, so you've got plenty of time. Drain out the excess out your bottom pour. Try to tilt it around and make sure you get everything out of there because you don't want any uh, puddles. In the end, that's what the inside of your tank will look like. Of course, it's not dry yet, but it's nicely coated. Try to save whatever you can, get it back in the can as soon as possible and seal it up. You can use it on another tank. It'll, it'll keep forever as long as you keep the air off it. Now we're going to let her sit for at least 24 hours and you'll know it's completely dry when there's no more solvent smell. And believe me, the solvent smell is pretty strong. This isn't something you want to leave dry in the house. I filled in any minor imperfections with putty. I sanded the whole thing down with 300 grit. Then I cleaned it off with acetone. And the first layer of primer that I'll use is self-etching, which goes on to bare metal. I'll top that off with a couple coats of regular primer and sand it down with 300 grit. And I've basically got a fully restored brand new fuel tank that'll last years and years to come. And that is how you do it the right way.